Yes, of course. So, you know, when someone gets cancer, they're given three options if they're lucky, right? And that's going to be a chemo, radiation, surgery. Those are usually your options or watch and wait, um, those kind of things. And outside of that, we like to think as a public that there are no other options. Everything else is kind of quackery, right? Or like this weird thing that some practitioner is doing. That's not actually true. We have decades worth of amazing scientific literature and research done on how diet affects cancer. And cancer for the last 80 years or so has been theorized to be a metabolic disease and more and more is coming out with that. And for those of you that don't know that, that means blood sugar related. So how your body handles blood sugar. So it's a metabolic condition. It uses both lactic acid and it, it has two food, food sources, all cancer does. So cancer eats both glucose and that's anything that turns into glucose in the body. So that can be, even if you don't eat sweet foods, if you eat potatoes or rice or quinoa, that stuff is turning into sugar in the body and, and your cancer cells will eat that as the fuel and then they will grow, right? They will uh, proliferate around the body. The cancer cells also will use something called glutamate, which is an amino acid. It's a protein that's found uh, really a lot in soy and in beans, but it's found in meats too. There's no protein that if food that I know of where you can really fully avoid glutamate. However, you can limit how much glutamate you get by choosing the lower glutamate proteins. And then also by getting most of your calories from fat because cancer doesn't eat fat. <laughs> so that's an easy solution. It'll eat the carbs and the proteins. It won't eat the fat. And then there's some foods that will block glutamate. So you can in include those into your diet to help uh, with that. But no, there's, there's really astounding studies done through Stanford and a lot of the Ivy League schools on the East Coast of the United States for the last 30, 40 years years on remissions in cancer. And I think all of us practitioners see it, but it's hard when a loved one gets it because no one believes you that this is like <laughs> something that actually can be really starved out. And the nice thing about it is that a lot of the dietary protocols can be done. So what I always tell people, I see a lot of cancer patients. And what I always tell people is that, listen, you don't have to just pick my camp. Like you can do everything you want. If you want to do chemo, radiation, surgery, go for it, but do this also. So <laughs> like do this also, whether you're not doing anything else or not. And, um, and you'll, ha you'll have a much better outcome typically. So it's, it's a tool that you can use and it's, it's a really effective tool, uh, that you can use that, that is unfortunately not well known, but I think it will become so I think what your experience was will become less and less as time goes on simply because the cancer diagnosis rate is just shooting through the roof and people will you know, so often we don't realize how poor our medical system is until we ourselves get sick, right? We're kind of under this illusion that they'll save us. And when you actually become the patient, you realize like no one's saving you. <laughs> There's nothing coming. So, so you, you start to kind of try other things and do other things. And that's why we see people like Steve Jobs who did the fruitarian diet, which obviously didn't work. And this is something we should talk about. You do not wanna eat fruit when you have cancer. In fact, you don't wanna eat antioxidants at all. Antioxidants are what cancer uses. This is gonna sound crazy to people, but it's really important you all know this. Uh, cancer uses antioxidants to protect itself from the immune system seeing it. It's actually how the cancer cells camouflage themselves and are able to grow. And so you don't wanna eat a lot of antioxidants. In fact, I wouldn't eat any if you can avoid it when you have an active cancer diagnosis. Wow, check that out. I mean, you're an absolute font of knowledge. I mean, I'm just sat here listening to you like with my mouth wide open, some of the things that you're saying. And I, I already know a lot, but I feel like I could just talk to you for ages. Um, but I know your time's <laughs> precious and I don't want to take up any more of it. So if people can, uh, really, I'm, I'm, I'll am i be surprised if nobody does, but anybody who's listening should go and follow you straight away. Where can they find you? Oh, thank you. You can find me on Instagram. It's Mary Reddick uh, CNC. And then you can also come to my website where I kind of channel everything together and that's enableyourhealing.com. Brilliant. Thank you very much for today, Mary. Oh, thanks for having me. This has been a lot of fun.